Masonic landmarks are a set of principles that many Freemasons claim to be ancient and unchangeable precepts of Masonry. Issues of the regularity of a Freemasonic lodge, Grand Lodge, or Grand Orient are judged in the context of the landmarks. Because each Grand Lodge is self governing, with no single body exercising authority over the whole of Freemasonry, the interpretations of these principles can and do vary, leading to controversies of recognition. Different Masonic jurisdictions have different landmarks. Topic Origins. According to Percy Jantz, the Masonic term landmark has biblical origins. He cites the Book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 28: "Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set," referring to stone pillars set to mark boundaries of land. He further quotes a Jewish law. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance. To emphasize how these landmarks designate inheritance, Albert Mackey expands on the above historical significance of landmarks. The universal language and the universal laws of masonry are landmarks, but not so are the local ceremonies, laws, and usages, which vary in different countries. To attempt to alter or remove these sacred landmarks is one of the most heinous offenses that a Mason can commit. Mark Tabbert believes that the actual rules and regulations laid down in the early Masonic landmarks derive from the charges of medieval stonemasons. History According to the general regulations published by the Premier Grand Lodge of England in 1723, "...every annual Grand Lodge has an inherent power and authority to make new regulations or to alter these, for the real benefits of this ancient fraternity, provided always that the old landmarks be carefully preserved." However, these landmarks were not defined in any manner. In 1844, George Oliver wrote that some jurisdictions restrict the definition of a Masonic landmark to be on tether, signs, tokens and words, while others include the ceremonies of initiation, passing, and raising of a candidate. Some also include the ornaments, furniture, and jewels of a lodge, or their characteristic symbols. In 1863, Oliver published the Freemasons' Treasury in which he listed 40 landmarks. Mackey expanded on both of these lists and remarked that the safest method of defining the landmarks is those ancient, and therefore universal, customs of the order, which either gradually grew into operation as rules of action, or, if at once enacted by any competent authority, were enacted at a period so remote, that no account of their origin is to be found in the records of history. Mackey's 25 landmarks The first major attempt to define the landmarks of Freemasonry was in 1858, when Mackey defined 25 landmarks in total The fraternal modes of recognition The division of Masonry into three symbolic degrees The legend of Hiram Abbef The authority and governance of a Grand Master the prerogative of the Grand Master to preside over an assembly of the craft The prerogative of the Grand Master to issue dispensations for holding lodge at irregular times The prerogative of the Grand Master to issue dispensations for holding lodge in irregular places The prerogative of the Grand Master to make masons at sight The necessity for masons to congregate in lodges the government of lodges to be by a master and two wardens The necessity that every lodge when congregated to be tiled The right of every mason to be represented in all general meetings of the craft The right of every mason to appeal from his lodge's decisions to the Grand Lodge 
the right of every mason to sit in every regular lodge that no unknown visitor be allowed to sit in lodge without being examined and found to be a Freemason that no lodge can interfere in the business of another lodge that every Freemason be amenable to the laws and regulations of the jurisdiction in which he resides that candidates for Freemasonry be required to meet certain qualifications, namely, being of mature age, not a cripple, and free-born that a belief in the existence of God be a requirement for membership that belief in a resurrection to a future life be a requirement for membership that a book of the law shall constitute an indispensable part of the furniture of every lodge the equality of masons the monarch, the nobleman, or the gentleman is entitled to all the influence which rightly belong to his position the secrecy of the institution the foundation of a speculative science upon an operative art that none of these landmarks can be changed topic <laughs> later interpretations Roscoe Pound (1870–1964) subscribed to six landmarks: belief in a supreme being, belief in the immortality of the soul, a book of sacred law as an indispensable part of the furniture or furnishings of the lodge, the legend of the third degree. The secrets of Freemasonry, the modes of recognition and the symbolic ritual of the Lodge That a Mason be a man, freeborn, and of lawful age. <laughs> <laughs> Modern interpretations In the last century, several American Grand Lodges attempted to enumerate the landmarks, ranging from West Virginia seven and New Jersey ten to Nevada thirty-nine and Kentucky fifty-four. In the 1950s, the Commission on Information for Recognition of the Conference of Grand Masters of Masons in North America upheld three ancient landmarks: monotheism an unalterable and continuing belief in God. The volume of the sacred law — an essential part of the furniture of the lodge. Prohibition of the discussion of religion and politics within the lodge. Quotations <inaudible> 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 The first great duty, not only of every lodge, but of every mason, is to see that the landmarks of the order shall never be impaired. <laughs> 